Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is the an unloved Rolex. And this is a Cellini Rolex Prince. They have a, it's, it's sort of an odd way of pronouncing it in this respect. Uh, normally, uh, people would say, well, you got a Rolex Cellini. And, uh, but for some reason, uh, they want to call this one the Rolex, uh, the Cellini Rolex instead of the Rolex Cellini Prince. Okay, so uh, that's what we'll call it, the Cellini Rolex Prince. I'll just call it the Prince. <laughs> okay, uh, this watch has an interesting history, and I don't want to go into uh, any great depth with it, but uh, basically it was from the 20s, and it has a uh, Art Deco, very elegant uh, type of look uh, for the time. Just definitely a dress watch, and um, they it didn't do too well, and so they discontinued it. And then in 2005, they said, "Well, you know, we we don't have anything like this, and so let's let's revise it and fix it up." And they came out with a nice movement for it called the. Uh, 7040, and uh, they did a whole bunch of other things I'd like to talk about. However, um, uh, even though they brought it out in 2005, 10 years later in 2015, they discontinued it again. It just wasn't selling. And uh, if you go online, you look around, you'll find a lot of these that are in what I call a uh, shop-worn uh, state. In other words, they're brand new watches that never sold, but they sort of gather, <laughs> gather, uh, gather dust uh, at the different uh, shops where they were. So anyway, um, but me, I love them. I think they're great watches. Uh, they're obviously, I, I talked to some dealers and <laughs> they're not too happy with them. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Some models are more popular than others. And even though this one was not popular, there's sort of a certain group of people like myself who, who really appreciate them. And I want to talk about them. Now, there's four models that they came out with. This is from in 2005. Before that, they had different series and so forth. But in 2005, the one they came out with, they came out with four. They're all in gold, either white gold or ever rose or yellow gold. So we'll take a look at those. The The numbers that I gave them uh, are, are really from zero to three. They're four, so zero, one, two, three equals four. And the, the, the head number is 544. And some of them have... Um, numbers after them but the ones that are really important you can if you want to look one of these up just put in one of those four digit numbers rolex ref so forth and they'll pop right up for you okay so uh so let's take a look at these watches and uh i refer to the unloved prince and like i said this is something i like by the way i got on my rectangular watch, or one of my rectangular watches today in honor of the uh, Prince. Uh, this is a Maurice Lacroix masterpiece. And uh, the reason I got this one, it's got a cool movement by uh, Jacques Essay. All right, uh, so let's, let's look at these. The first one, uh, I'm, they, I can identify the different models, not by the reference number. You can do it that way too, but rather by the guilloche. Uh, this first one is called the Clou de Paris, and it has sort of a either hobnailed or quilt-like uh, guilloche. And the thing that's so cool about the prints is that they're, it's on the front and it's on the back. Uh, and you can, this is unusual for uh, Rolex, is that they have a display back. Uh, they're very concerned about the waterproofness of their watches and of course the oyster is the waterproof one that um that they use in most of their watches uh this one's got pretty good waterproofing uh i think it's down 100 meters something like that uh, i i <laughs> i wouldn't take one <laughs> in the shower with me i doubt it hurt it but you know you got to be careful with your watches okay um so this one is it's got a round dial 
and then it's got a second subdial. And on the back, uh, you can see the uh, the winding gear and the and the, you know, what goes into the um, the barrel. And um, it's got a pretty good size balance wheel, which I like a lot. Now. It, it is my manual winding, but they, they talk about a 70 hour, some places they said the 72 hour reserve. Um, the movement, uh, the frequency they have is 4 hertz or 28,800 uh, vibrations per hour, semi oscillations, semi oscillations per hour. And then it's COSC certif uh, certification, which, you know, is good, <laughs> well certified watch. So, you can expect it to keep very good time. Uh, the only thing I'm a little dubious about is, and I found this in two different places where they had 28,800, so I'm not saying anybody made it up, but they might have, because uh, most of the watches that uh, Rolex makes are 28,800 VPH. And so I, I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find a whole spec sheet on this. So um, <laughs> that's what we're going with for now. 70 hours uh, in a watch this size is a lot, okay? And so I'm, that's what I thought. Well, maybe it's a little slower than, maybe it's three hertz, but who knows? Okay, so that's the first one, uh, the Clou de Paris, and uh, it's a yellow gold, big, beautiful watch. <laughs> okay, the next one uh, is is called the uh, Gouderon Circulaire, and this one I absolutely love. It's got a, a, a circular-like uh, pattern on it uh, that's referred to as the uh, Gouderon Circulaire, and basically it's it, it's a circular, like, guilloche on the front and on the back. And what they've done on the back is just amazing. The, the circular begins on top of the balance wheel, and then it sort of spreads out from there like a pebble in the waves in a water. Uh, this watch is just super cool. It has got, it has, I don't know how they decide and where they're going to put the numbers. Uh, these are Roman numerals, and they have it at uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. <laughs> Don't know why they got a crown up where the uh, twelve goes, and uh, I, I I find this a, this is a is a fun watch and, and plus in addition this is very art uh, deco. You also have at the bottom it looks almost and the top it looks almost like a grill with the uh, horizontal lines going in there. Uh, to me this is a gorgeous watch and it's got that cool movement. Um, the movement the thing that attracts me most about the movement. It's from the top. Uh, you see, first of all, you see three bridges, and each bridge has got a ruby in it, which indicates that there's a gear underneath there. And then at the very bottom, I guess you'd call it the fourth bridge, is is like a butterfly bridge, or some some people call it a Batman bridge, that uh, goes over the balance wheel. And um, <laughs> it's just it's just cool. I got a feeling, you know, watchmakers see something like this, and it's uh, they love it because they don't have to try to put in like three or four gears under a, under a Siegel plate. Uh, this one has all of those little bridges for them. Cool, cool watch. Okay, um, now this next one is called Rayon from De La Guerra. And this one is, uh, uh, has Arabic numbers instead of Roman numerals, and it's got them at three, six, and nine. <laughs> Who knows where they're going to put them next? Uh, you better move over a little. Getting the sun came up and got it, got in my face. So I'm going to move over just a scotch. There we go. And um, so th this is another one. Now the thing about the Rayon uh, Flam de la Guerre is that you have this particular sunbeam, you might say, uh, that it comes out at a certain angle beginning in the small seconds on, on the dial on the front, and it comes out from there. And you flip it over on the back, and the center of it is the balance wheel. Uh, and it comes sort of flashing out of the bottom. 
Uh, and again, I don't, I don't know of any other watch that has individual guilloche or patterns on the front and on the back. I really don't. And that's another thing. I think this is such a cool, cool watch. And um, so anyway, so this is the uh, Rayon Flamme de la Guerra. All right, the next one is another one that is described as a Rayon Plan de la Guerra. Um, this one, though, has is different because it's got a now, first of all, it's, it's got a squarish uh, uh, dial, and uh, second of all, it has the um, it has sort of a dual uh, flame coming out. Uh, one is from the um, one is from the from the small seconds, and the other one is from the hours and, and minutes and so forth. Uh, yeah, from the hours and minutes from the top. Okay, now and so you have this dual flame coming out or ray or whatever you want to call it. Then on the back, when you look at the back, you see over the the top bridge, the middle bridge. Uh, you have two different flames coming out, two different rays, set of rays coming out. Again, they match it. This is that's so cool. Now, like I said, this is not the most popular watch you're going to run into from um, uh, from Rolex, and that's how come I call this the unloved Rolex <laughs> as a type. But to me, it's 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 creative. It shows that you know, given its range of talent what Rolex can do beyond what they have and they they have had for years they keep you know having what what they call the incremental improvement okay <laughs> of the same thing and this is so different and so interesting is that to me it, it it's a neat watch uh it's, it's something I'd like to have but like I said <laughs> don't plan on getting this for any kind of investment because you know well can i get my money back you can't probably or if you have one of these you have a very hard time selling it at least according to dealers even when they lower the price uh they're not getting any any kind of action we'll say uh but that doesn't matter to me because i wouldn't plan on reselling a watch like this i really like it a lot okay well um that's uh, all I have to say, really, about about the uh, prints. But I'd really like to find out what you think. I've known exactly one person who's owned a prints. Very sharp guy. He taught the um, uh, Historical Society of uh, or Horological Society of New York's uh, course on uh, watchmaking, and he had this particular watch. And he loved it. Uh, he just, it was great. <laughs> he thought it was a great watch. I agree with him, too. But I, that's the only one I've ever seen. I, I, I don't know a single other person with one. W one reason I'd like to get my hands on one, if nothing else, to uh, run it through my time grapher, because I'm still curious about the uh, uh, frequency on that. Okay, so let's hear what you have to say about it, what you think. And as always, this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. And until Sunday, when we're having a, a collection review, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collections.